sporting event. No, it's not. <laughs> For the Asian I, I think, Games, I, I also did. 2005, yeah. 2005. Yeah. Was, it in, was, was it the thing? In, I think it was a, the closing ceremony song. I don't know if it was the theme song or if it was just specific to the closing. But yeah, that was 2000. No, my daughter was born already. So 2006 um, in Doha, in Qatar. We're rising from the floor to about 50 feet up in the air. And it was not it was not fun. It's not like this, where I'm only rising just maybe not even 10 feet. Um, and I'm, I'm still at ground level. But that, that was like one of the most frightening things I've ever done in my life. And thank goodness I was lip syncing because there was there's no way I would have been able to pull that off singing live because people would have heard how scared I was. And it was also windy and the thing was swaying, so that wasn't fun. Um, but to answer your question, no, this this is not the first time I'm singing a theme song for a sporting event. This is the second one. How does it feel to do it again? Oh, it's always fun. It's always fun to sing. So this is no exception. Thank you, sir. Next, please. Since this is the first time you're singing a theme song, especially for the Philippines, aside from the pride and honor Ms. Lea Salonga, congratulations, by the way, to the lyricists, Ms. Boy Pintos, of course, the composer, Sir Ryan Cadillabelli, the singer, of course. Uh, how does it feel to sing the theme song for the fourth staging of the Philippines of the Saturday Station Games? It feels fantastic. Um... It feels wonderful to, it, it's always a, a wonderful thing anyway to represent your country in an arena such as this, but to represent the Philippines in your own country, and hopefully it helps to inspire our athletes to do their best, win or lose. Um, and, and hopefully it represents the best of, of who we are. Um, that's the only hope that I can have. Um, I guess the, 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 the intention is not just to entertain. I mean, I'm hoping people like the song, um, but, I'm, I'm, but I'm also hoping that it serves as a source of, of pride and inspiration, especially for the athletes that will be competing. Of course, we are restored. Well, okay, first of all, here's the history of the Gumpay Nating Lahat. It was written by Gary Granada, and its initial usage was for a commercial for the LTV. And the song, since the commercial has aired and its parang, its usage expired, bilang isang parang commercial jingle, it's a jingle. Um, parang it's, it's taken a life of its own. Ginawana. It's parang now it's more of a standalone song. And Gary Granada, the composer, has licensed it since for other commercial uses that have nothing to do with telecoms or, or theme songs or what, which is his absolute right to do. Um, but yeah, so yung intention ng, of singing Tagumpay Nating Lahat is very, very different. Kasi yung isip ko, when I recorded that first song, oh, it's an ad for people to eat. This one, talagang specific representing the Philippines for the Sea Games, which has a different mindset altogether. So, I mean, sure, a song is a song is a song, pero yung intention going in, syempre makaiba. Makaiba siya. As for the Philippine arena, I won't be able to sing it in the opening, which is where the Sea Games opening. I think it's in Philippine Arena. I will not be able to sing it there because I will be in Singapore doing Sweeney Todd. Um, it's unfortunate yeah, that I will not be able to perform it when the ceremony is open um, because I've already had previously other engagements and commitments prior to being asked to sing this. So, sayang lang. But I wish everyone the best for a wonderful opening ceremony. Thank you. Next question, please. That that says job well done. It should be job well done regardless of whether you win or you lose or you gain second or third place or even the last place on the on, on the rosters. That doesn't matter. You have to always represent the country and always be mindful of that. So even if you lose, kailangan wag pikon, kailangan. Um, it's, I mean, how you outwardly respond or react to something, it's not just about you. It's a reflection of your countrymen, your teammates, your coaches, the people around you. It's, that, that has to be the mindset of every athlete. And this, that's also the same, that's also true when you win that you have to be 
um, magnanimous in victory and and be mindful to thank kind sa isip mo lang, to thank and be grateful to everyone who helped you get up there and also to be gracious no matter what happens kasi nga ang mundo ng ang ang mata ng buong mundo ay doon naka-trade na sa iyo so how you respond how you react how you fare in an interview it, you always need to represent the best of your country Thank you so much, Brian. Congratulations. Thank you. We have room for uh, one last question. Anyone from our friends from the press? Going once, going twice. <laughs> All right, last question now. Hi, Pauline also from CNN Philippines. My question is for Ms. Lea. Um, you've represented the Philippines already in the world stage, and it must have taken you a lot of discipline to get to where you are now, to need to hone your talent. So your advice for our Filipino athletes as they represent the country and you know how do they how should they stay dedicated to their mission um discipline is hard but necessary it's it's one of the most difficult things to to tell someone about and for every individual the word discipline means something different um, I think to an athlete or to any serious artist, it is something that is absolutely taken with every bit of seriousness. Because it's something that, especially athletes, it's something that they understand. So it means sleeping at a certain time, waking up at a certain time, eating the right foods, staying away from, from vices, and that includes late nights, that includes like games on your phone. It's the things like that. It's, it's knowing what to stay away from, knowing what to absolutely foster it also means you know resting at the right time and being mindful and, and including time also for meditation or prayer or whatever your individual belief has room for so my message for all the athletes is that you have been training for years and years and your moment is coming you know so keep your eyes on the prize and and know that whatever happens, the Philippines is behind you, encouraging you, supporting you, hopefully inspiring you to do your best. Even if your best means that you're not going to win, you still have to push yourself harder than you've ever pushed yourself in your entire life. And sometimes the most heartwarming and memorable stories from games like this don't come from the ones who win. It's it's sometimes the ones who lose, but who lose with so much heart and, and dignity. When you went, for example, I've seen this one athlete who snapped his Achilles tendon on the oval, but was aided by his father just to get to the finish. That's like that's the moment I remember. I don't remember who won, but I remember him and his father. So it's it's moments like that. So it's all, always be mindful that you, you just might be the most inspirational story of the games, whatever happens. And then and that throughout, you have to represent your country well. So I wish everybody all the best. Thank you so much, Ms. Leia.